Welcome to Tables 101 using Pages. Today I'm going to show you a series of different um, things that you can use to help you make a table look professional as well as nice and neat. These would make it acceptable to put into a lab report. Um, I'm going to show you how to make the table, add columns and rows to merge things as well as if at the very end I'll show you how to make a before and after set of data. Inserting your table is relatively simple. I'm going to be using this set of data today. Um, simply comes from somebody's lab report. You can see here that they have five changes in their independent variable and three trials. Typically, we put our independent variable across the top and down this side, the first down the first column. You want to add that those units at the top and insert that to insert that plus or minus symbol. Go to edit special characters. You're looking for math symbols in which you'll find it. You can add it to your favorites thing so that it, you can just have to don't have to keep looking for it each time and then add what you need. Then we can add our in and we can add our independent changes here. I need some extra rows since I have five changes. Generally, we have, we have three trials across the top. Dependent always goes across the top, but I need another column for that third trial. And now I can insert my data. Now, this data down here all has the same units and is the same information. Instead of rewriting it three times, I'm actually going to insert a row above that column, and then I'm going to merge merge the three columns here. This gives me the ability to write what these all are about. As well as their units. and what it's about without actually having to rewrite it three times. It also makes it look nice and neat so we can see exactly that all of this data is connected to the trials of the amount of oxygen that we produced. Of course we're not done because no table is complete without a label and a title. our spelling here for a second. Now it's important to understand that the reason why we put the reason why we make uh, labels and titles. Your title should be descriptive enough that I know what your table is about without actually having to read your lab report. So if I just saw the table with the title, I should have a rough idea of what your experiment, rough idea of what I'm looking at, even if I don't necessarily know exactly what was being done in the lab. Now, your label over here is extremely important, whether you're labeling things table one, table two, graph one, figure one, etc. This gives you the ability to actually reference back to your data in a very easy manner. In your conclusion or evaluation, as you're actually trying to explain and analyze your data, you can simply say the data from table one or the data in graph 5. As you can see, the trend lines, whatever, it gives you a chance to actually easily refer to information without having to rewrite tons of information multiple times. Your, your label and your title should either be on the bottom or on the top of your, of your table. Generally, the IB likes it on the bottom. I tend to like mine preferable on the top, but it really doesn't matter as long as you've got all of that information um, current. If you're interested in how to create a before and after set, it's quite simple in many cases. We're going to create another row below, below the trial row. And then this column here, all of these, it's right under that trial, I'm actually going to split the column in half. This allows me to type before whatever 
Right. By doing this, I've created a way in which to add before and after columns. They're still under trial one and still have the same units with the same heading. We still know everything that it's about. This gives a very nice, neat, professional feel and also gives us the chance to actually see what's going on and how to create it. Hope this is helpful to you and hope that you can actually use it to create what you need to create in multiple different ways. Thanks for tuning in.